Hello and welcome to another video. It's true I haven't posted anything in many many months, but uh, here we are. So I'm still familiarizing familiarizing myself with the um, F18 Hornet. So here we are in DCS in the F18 Hornet. Uh, well, first of all, this is sunny Nevada. We, I moved away from my usual stomping grounds in the Caucasus, and. We're gonna start actually doing going through the entire procedure as described in the uh, NatOps, which uh, I have a copy of. So, going through the NatOps manual, uh, I would have, have of course have to perform a pre-flight check, starting with the nose gear, the probes, wings, air intakes, APU, and so on. But since this is DCS, I cannot do that. So, we will leave it at that. So, let's move into the office, the proverbial office, and start with the beginning. So, of course, we will have to check and adjust the harness and pedals and ejection. Uh, let's disable the pilot here. So, okay, left console, we need to check the circuit breakers let's see where those are I've never really used them before they should be on the left console but they are not probably not visible so okay nuclear console switch man okay yeah. we don't use that uh, the manual canopy handle stowed LOX supply we're off the O box for the aircraft. O box is this uh, oxygen regulator system. It's off all aircraft. Okay. Com, com 1 and COM 2. This is the uh, panel and it needs to be set to both. I guess this should be fine. Um, ILS. Should be set by the UFC, or we can set it manually here. Volume panel, well, okay, well, it's pretty much at maximum, so we'll be able to hear everything. Uh, generator tie control. This is. Okay, the probe is tracked. Generator tie control is. This is for the uh, flight control surfaces. I'm not exactly familiar with what that is. Dump switches. Okay, fuel dump switch is off. Internal wing set off. Throttles are off. Parking brake set. Landing light set to off. Anti skid off flaps to full selective selective jettison is set to safe landing gear down and the mechanical stop which is somewhere here should be fully engaged uh, can canopy jettison fully forward uh, master arm set to safe uh, fire and APU fire lights are not pressed in. All the HUDs, HUD switches and DDIs are off. Uh, ATT switch should be off. ECM, the ECM panel is right here, is set to off. Okay, we're moving right. Hmm. This is the AV cool switch, door for emergency, next would be spin switch. Okay, that's at a normal clock. We have a clock here somewhere. I don't see it. So it needs to be to check and set circuit breakers on the right console. 
Well, they should be in. Hook handle is up. Wing fold. Same as wing position. AV cool or FCS cool. Normal. Radar altimeter. Let's see. The radar altimeter should be set to off. Generator switches set to normal. Battery switch off. ECS panel. They should be the ECS. Okay, let's. All right. Cabin temperature. This technically doesn't affect us in any way in the, in the game, but set to. Ten o'clock. It's set to ten o'clock. Bleed air. Normal. Engine anti ice. Off. Pito anti ice auto. Defog. Switch. Set to mid range. Windshield ice. Set to off. Interior panels as desired. Well, we won't be using them because it's daylight, so no point. Sensors are off. KY58 should be set. I don't know exactly what to set here, but an NVG container, secure NVG, or still okay. And we're going to start battery operation. Check and override. Okay, uh, this go on, battery switch on, master caution to be moved. Okay, voltage seems fine. We are not using ground power, so we're going to use an APU uh, start. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. Okay, now we're going to turn the batteries off again and on. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. Okay. Uh, we're going to leave the battery on and we're going to crank up the APU. power unit powering up. And we are looking for the green light. APU is on. And we're going to proceed to start the light engine. At 15% we will advance the throttle to idle. 15. Now you can see the engine's pulling up that we have here the temperature, current RPM. There we go, NO2, the nozzle temperature and oil pressure. This will stabilize at about 65%. And the plane is performing a series of bits on the built in test, so we're going to set on the displays. It will turn on.
And there was the IR override. Now we even have a helmet mounted display on this thing. Rider. Okay. HMT if applicable on. There we go, we have an element mounted device. Okay, we are not using AP or post bit start. Okay, then we're going to cycle the air bleed to normal. Well, it is about that. Crank the engine and it's powering up. And we're going to start also to set the radar to operate and INS to align. Close the cockpit. go. Cockpit is now closed. Radar is operational. FCS reset button. Okay. No, no. Uh, the sound you heard is the APU going offline. We can go to the bit. And if we have to, we were going to do the takeoff trim. Okay. Yep, this seems to be in order. We have no issues with the FCS. Flaps to half, uh, they are used like that for takeoff. Okay, trim check. We've already set it. Flaps again to auto. Flaps to half. Alright, then we need to do the probe, so we're going to extend the refueling probe and check if it opens. Okay, the refueling probe is ready. And speed brake. Should be set to airfield as well. I'll just set it now. It's also on the uh, seat. Okay, we would have normally the crew captain very far out of the launch bar. The launch bar is operational, but in fact, it. 
APU is off. Now we need to set bingo fuel. Let's set to about, well, I guess, 1500 pounds should be about enough. Okay. Well, we haven't really spoken to the ADC. Set the other one. Radar altimeter. Uh, we're still waiting for the. Oh, the INS is already done. So we set this to nav. Uh, okay, mission data. So I will need to check the. Uh, new board that we have here. I guess we have. Okay, so we know that the airport where we're going has 77 X ray on the back end, so let's set that. And of course, I haven't. The brake went on. Go to attack and 77 x ray enter. We'll put this thing on. Let's see what else do we know from this QNH. Okay, so 2992. Let's check. Set, set our altimeter. It's okay. Uncage. Standby attitude indicator. Uh, right, ILS. Well, this is only. Uh, I don't think this supports regular ILS at the moment, so just ICLS instead of carried landing system. But I don't really know the frequency for Nevada, so this is our flight plan. Hmm. We are going to Tonopa test range. Let's see if we can find it. This is the regular Tonopa. Oh, this is the Tonopa test range. This is where we are going. Um, Tonopa test range. We have the yeah, one is 32 and 14, and it supports ILS localized one, one way 14. So I guess we're going to be using that. And localizer is on one way 1.3, but we can't set that on the Hornet. All right. We, well, we set the tack and receiver at least to channel 77 X-ray, so that's fine. Then let's check the mission data. So we go to the HSI waypoints. Two, three, four, five. I think we have nine. No, seven waypoints. Yep, that's it. That should be fine. It supports up to 60 waypoints, so this, this is okay. Let's put this to HUD. Um, bit weapon sensor stores. We are not using any weapons. HMD align. Okay, now this is something I need to figure out how to do the alignment. This needs to be set on the HUD. And let's see. This should have a switch here somewhere. We are not going to use the nav flare, we are not going to use the flare. Radar is operational, well I guess this is... 
quite aligned. I don't know exactly how to align it. So how do you align it? So... Menu... Supplemental... HMD... Yeah, there we go, it has it. And... Align. And this is something I haven't done. Set the cage and uncage button. Okay, this is taking a while, it seems. I should get a message that the HMD is aligned. I guess this is not implemented yet. Okay, well, I'm not getting any notification about the HMD aligning, so I guess this is fine. We're gonna set this to the HUD again. Let's see what tests can we do. Well, communications. For some reason, these bits actually fail. Communication comes one, it's two, five, zero, 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 and enter. And com two, we're going to set it to channel two, which would be the Tonova tower, I guess. One two four seven five. One two four seven five zero. Oxygen should be should be on. All right. Now, well, now it's fairly standard. Take off. Okay, so we are going to take off to the west. So I'll object the airport diagram here a little bit. I don't have it, but so we are going to be using Laughlin is here. Sorry, my mistake. So we're going to be using ah north takeoff. So we're going to taxi from here all the way down and go north. 
So we're going to go to Runway 34. So we're going to turn left. Now this is an old bug. Sometimes the ground just disappears, so it, it comes back eventually. Alright. So the next plan is to set this to waypoints. We're going to remove this. Uh, set this to HSI waypoints sequence one. Okay, now they're going to go into sequence. And I guess we are going to go. So we can set this to HUD. And we're going to go. And those wheels steering is in it. Alright. Sorry, this was a bit, bit uh, weird because I have not really done this before, so I'm just gonna boom. This is gonna be a long one, so please bear with me. At the end, I don't want to use 1.6, but sadly the ATC system in DCS is not that great, so I'll just be using one 34. Normally I think 1.6 is the one that's active, but let's set the node with steering too high. Turning the right way, but I think I am. Is going straight to the runway. No, we're gonna take the taxi away also to the left. Now, yeah, well, I'm not going straight down the middle of this taxiway as I should, but... Okay, the plan is to fly at about 16,000 feet, and maybe 350 knots airspeed. I took some extra fuel because I might perform some maneuvers over the Tonopa test range airfield. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons why I have the extra tanks. Now, this plane lacks still some functionality. I mean, it's an early access plane, but. It's it's supposed to be an academic slash study study level when it's done, so it should be fine. Let me, let's look at this. I don't really need to look at the NPCD because I can follow the hard indications for the waypoints. And we can 
and set this to FCS. I'm not going to use the electronic warfare here because there's no point. But I'll activate them just for shits and giggles sake. Now, I've had a bit of trouble controlling this on the ground because my pedals tend to be a bit too responsive, I guess. I, I didn't edit any curves for the Hornet, mind you, it's just I'm using stock settings for it. I haven't turned on any of the external lights, but well. If I decide to build a Hornet cockpit for myself at some point, maybe then I will. I do love the Harry. I feel the Hornet's quite suited to my needs because it's multi-world. At least if I'm gonna fly alone, I'll be flying the Hornet. If I'm gonna fly with a friend, if they have the Tomcat, then we'll fly the Tomcat together, but... Yeah, this head uh, helmet mounted queuing system is pretty good. I've seen a similar thing on the F-16 in BMS. It also has one. You can designate targets with it. But I have not used it yet, so I will not do air-to-air -air in any plane until I get some head tracking system. But probably track IR because VR is a bit out of the budget. And I would still like to, you know, eat. Well, of course I can probably afford it, but... Okay, let's do a little turn here. Alright. Okay. Now let's line her up. Throw it to idle. Then let's talk to the tower. MCO 1 1, request takeoff. MCO 1 1, you are cleared for takeoff delay. Climb 300 at 2 FE 29 decimal 27. Two nine two seven. okay. I'm not sure how reliable this is, but. Let's set the altitude. Okay. Well, he said two nine two seven. So if this is thirty feet above sea level, I'd be surprised. Okay. Now uh, we will be turning nose wheel steering off soon enough. Fans the engines very slowly. It's not an airliner, but I thought it has some control over the takeoff run. Normally, I, I could go immediately full afterburner, but I'm not that if I'm, uh, that great with the Hornet yet. 52 knots. Okay, brothers now should be effective. Okay. okay let's see. I told you I have a bit of trouble keeping it on the runway. Otherwise, I can fly it fairly well. Now full afterburn. Uh, the takeoff speed should have been around 150 knots. All right, yeah. Gear up. And flaps up. Okay. 
Okay, of course I could always just use the attitude call function on the uh, autopilot, and it will do this for me. Let's set this to HSI. I just find it easier to work like this. Waypoint one is. Um, I can still turn it even with this on. We can give this as climbing speed around 350. Should be okay. Okay, there we go. 18 miles. And we need to continue climbing too. But six angels 16. So angels 16 just means 16,000 meters. Okay, now it's the play. We'll just maintain attitude and climb. And the autopilot is not the most advanced. I mean, not the same I've seen on some. Airliners, but it's it's fairly good. And I like using the left DDI as an HSI because. It just makes more sense to me there, but I mean, I could set this to HSI and the moving map to the HUD, but anyway, steadily climbing. Okay, we're about. Okay, no. uh, this doesn't have the you know, just follow waypoints autopilot. I think it doesn't at least. No, it's just a trim a little bit. Okay. Yeah, we're approaching waypoint one, it's a bit on the left. Uh, if you're wondering how did I do this, it's just uh, I use the Combat Flight. It's a DCS flight planning tool more or less. You can also do, I think, whole missions with it, but uh, I just use it for flight planning and the fact that it can generate a very decent kneeboard that I can actually print out and use. 10,000 feet. Yeah, we're getting there. Let's reduce the power a little bit. Okay, try to get in around 350. Oh, well, there should be fine. One point eight, one point seven miles. This should be set to sequence. So I think it should be fine. Zero point four miles. Zero point two, and let's go to that. Point, which is a few degrees to the left. Now we're approaching 16,000, so we're going to go a bit of a nose down attitude a bit. Yes, I'm manhandling the stick as some of my compadres on the DCS Facebook would say. Let's manhandle this for that stick. 22 miles. This is not a very long flight, mind you, and I'm flying about 330 knots. I'm super, I don't want to fly too fast. Okay, we're approaching the desired waypoint. And I'm going to deactivate attitude hold and engage altitude hold. We're about engines 6 now, so. Now we're basically this is a very easy flight. Uh, this is more or less familiarization with the uh, flight and navigation system. According to this, we're about okay, let's cut off the power a little bit. We're going a bit too fast. Somewhere here. Yeah, this should be fine. Uh, 371. Okay, 
it's it's slowing down but we haven't really intercept intercepted Takan yet. So We can of course activate attack as well for reception, but I will just stick to the weapon. <coughs> as you can see, there's not much to do. I mean, when cruising, this plane actually can be quite, quite relaxing to fly, but. Uh, compared to the F5, which I also fly, this is really not a hands-on airplane. I mean, it's it's smart enough to fly itself for the most part, as long as you have a decent navigation data. And I mean, you just follow the waypoints, and it it's really a piece of cake. Uh, a bit of the sights in Nevada. I don't know what that is. It's some sort of town. That's Las Vegas, actually. And I would be crossing into civilian airspace and Edwards Air Force Base. Or is it? I don't remember which Air Force Base is here. Forgive me, I'm not really that familiar with the Nevada area. This is Boulder City Airport and... Oh, Nellis. Yeah, Nellis is in Nevada, not Edwards is in California. I keep mixing those two in my head. Now let's go to waypoint 3. 21 miles. I wish we had the more distances here where we could actually take advantage of the range of the airplanes and the speed, but well, what can you do? I think the next leg is a little bit longer. It's about, this is 15 miles. And the plane will just climb now to 60,000 and we'll tell it to hold altitude. Um, mostly the climbing and descending I'm just doing with the throttle, I'm not really touching the um, stick almost at all. And the stabilizer is neutral more or less, it's one degree up. That will be the elevators. Elevator trim is set to one degree up. Now, this is an F-18C, so it doesn't have a lot of color displays, but I think the Super Hornet has uh, color displays literally everywhere in the cockpit. So, even the uh, UFC, so what's the UFC? This here that I'm pointing at, this is the UFC up front control panel. You can use this to control also all sorts of functionality in the plane. So, it's basically your kind of man-machine interface with, it, with the Hornet. This is how you talk to the plane. To put it that to put it in a very layman's terms. This is how you enter data, this is how you read data, this is all well, the data you read on the displays, but this is pretty much how you do everything. And I feel the Hornets I do like the A10. I'm a ground pounder by heart, but um, I feel it's a bit too exhaustive in some ways. Uh, the only time that I'm actually using the stick is now, so I'll return to the next waypoint to maintain altitude and turn. Uh, 
as I said, this is going to be a long one, so you don't have to watch it to the end if you don't like hearing my voice. I think we have attack and station intercepted. Yes, there it is. So we're now in range of the uh, Tonopa attack. And, well, technically, we're at uh, Angels 161. So, but 100 feet over is not, not a big problem. Usually, the envelope is about plus minus 100, so. And I guess we can set this to barometric altitude. I think the Tonopa airfield elevation is about 5,000 feet. So we'll have to be careful with the altimeter uh, pressure. We will need to. Yeah, we need to go for runway 14 because that's the only one that has ILS. So that's usually the active runway, so. And if I look at the knee board, not the briefing. Knee board. I have prepared here. I should really print these things out at some point. I usually fly in the provinces. So we have Laughlin, Boulder Municipal. We're going to strike. So we just pass straight strike, flush, and from Garth, we need to. Start flying the approach. Let's check the Tonopa approach. This is McCarran, that's the Las Vegas airport. Nellis, I don't care about Nellis at the moment. I usually fly from Nellis, but North Las Vegas, Tonopa. Tonopa test range. Do we have any approach for it? So I guess we have, well, we need to approach it from the west. So we'll need to intercept a certain attack and course. Not auto. Let's go to five. Oh, there we go. I should have enabled the auto from the beginning, but I didn't. So. Well, this is a bit of a longer leg, so we need to approach from the west, and we need to fight, or, well, we could approach from the east as well. Do we have any more? Oh, we can also approach from runway 32, so it also has that. I guess we're going to do the runway 32 approach, and this is the Tonopo test range, and this is the runway 32, so... And we are coming from Garth. So we fly the, the Garth approach. Sorry, this is taking quite a bit, but I need to actually take a look at what the hell is going on here. I don't have VOR on this plane. This plane doesn't do VOR, it does TACAN. So I guess we need to intercept the 319 radio. Let's see. No, 321. Apologies. Yeah, 321 radio. So, we could set it already. Three, two, one. 
something like that. Oh, we have some inlet press, so let's deal with that. Uh, there's a switch here. I think it just flip to on. And there we go. This should be it. I didn't expect this to happen, but well, we are at 16,000 feet, so... And so I guess, we, yeah, we just need to deal with that approach. Yeah, just need to adjust the uh, attack and force. Um, if you've flown before and you have an instrument rating or you have any idea what it is, it's more or less the same as VOR. It has a DME component as well, so it's uh, the military invented it, but the uh, directional ranging and the DMEs, uh, the DME were also given to the civilian sector because it really helps in navigation. Now, of course, the VOR stations, I heard they're being decommissioned, but they are still useful so many people still like like smaller planes for example still use them military still uses TACAN but GPS is becoming more and more prevalent so but if the GPS fails TACAN helps so and we should be approaching the top of our descent so I'm going to deactivate the uh, barometric altitude hold and cut the power a bit and we're gonna start our descent but not fast just some hundreds of feet per minute feet feet per minute but we're going to start descending about there and we're gonna trim nose down a bit for speed Uh, Tonopa is in a flat area, so I need to figure out, uh, this game does not have an 80s, so I have no idea what the barometric pressure there is, because I don't have a metal for it. That would be amazing if I did, but I do not. I think 720 feet per minute should be fine. And we're approaching 0.5. Yeah, uh, we can do a straight in flight, or we could approach at 2500 and fly the pattern. That's also an option. Start to waypoint six. Okay, let's, we need to also expedite our descent a little bit, a little bit of course, but I can just follow the um, nav points on my DDI, so that's fine.
now I'm doing manual flight because No, I should only use the visor, but I don't know exactly how to enable it. So. Checking my engines. Okay. Just barely consumed any of our fuel. We are a bit high. Okay, let's switch to. And let's gonna let's check here. How do you turn on the radar operator? There might be some sort of key. Twelve thousand barometric, so we would need to be at six thousand five hundred on approach. Fifteen miles. Okay, we have some more hopping. To do We're exactly on 320 course select. I should have calculated my top of descent and does this have a key for the visor? No, this is something I have never remembered to do in any plane. Nope. Oh well. Yeah, this the sun's a killer. There it is. Ten thousand feet. Yeah, this is pretty high elevation terrain. I wonder what it looked like long ago. I mean, there are plenty of dried river banks. And well, three two eight point six. I'm gonna enable the cannon. Try to set up the course properly so we can actually land. We need to stop at about 6,000 feet. Six miles. So the Tonopa test range appears to be in some sort of valley. Let's look at the Taka.
so 316 for 9 miles and QFE 2474. Can't go lower than this. Okay, that's weird. And I will not set to sea level pressure because that's incorrect. Should be the airfield. This is a 316 for 19 miles. Okay, we're going to stop there. I guess we're gonna fly the pattern. This appears to be the airfield. It still says 11 miles. Oh, it's there. Never mind. This is something else. Yeah, okay, look here. We're still quite a bit away, so. I thought those runways were the Tonopa airfield. That's strange. So we're gonna fly a VFR pattern from here. So we're gonna enter overhead. Uh, let's see if I can do it right. We're gonna enter overhead, brake, and put the brake. We're still slow, but well, we didn't really fly that fast the whole way, so. Now an ILS would have been amazing, but sadly we don't. The plane does not come equipped with, with a land-based ILS, it's an ICLS. 
The Mirage, actually, by the way, if you don't know and you want to fly the Mirage, it has an ILS system. And as does the um, A-10. This being a naval aircraft, it's a bit more, um, it's, let's say, it's a bit more finicky in that. Yeah, I will not fly straight in, however. I'll kind of have to guesstimate the altitude here, so let's enter the pattern. So what we need to fly is basically... Um, I'm just using the stick for lateral, I'm gonna try to use the um, throttles for maintaining this end rate. So 250 to 60, we have accelerated quite a bit. And I'm gonna enter the runway overhead at about... But I think this is about 800 feet away the road. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna go for run if we do now, I'm flying the pattern first. Okay. Flaps one half. What's the state of my flaps one half? Speed a bit down. Gear down. Now, the main goal is to... Roger that. And we're gonna turn opposed to runway 32. So we're gonna fly trying to maintain the altitude. Maintaining the altitude if I can. This is something I'm still struggling a bit with. So opposite, it should be one one four. Okay. Uh, we need to be on speed. Okay, let's give her a bit more speed here. We lost altitude. Maybe too much. And this is I'm quite low. Okay, there we go. Parallel with the runway, ish. So let's trim up our speed. Okay, let's try to set the this. So we need to make the velocity vector a little circle with uh, two wings and a fin. And the E bracket mean meet and stay together. So we need to help them find love. That's the trick of landing a hornet. Well, I'm gonna fly to that mountain bridge then with the final turn. Let's try to not descend so much. I'm just using the throttle here. Okay, that's okay. Trying to use the throttle to just find a sweet spot. Oh, there's no sweet spot. It's always trying to do something. So it wants to go down and need to go forward. I don't need a trimmer anymore, but I do need to keep the throttle. Okay, so now it wants to go up. Now it wants to go down. Let's push forward. So it's it's a bit it's a bit of a tricky plane. We're about hundred feet. Jesus Christ. Okay, let's try to keep her. Not by not using the stick. She is on. She is trimmed for speed, but this airfield is very very high altitude, so I should have been higher. Maybe I need to climb a little bit. Not the best landing, but. Let's try to fly an outbound from here. Let's give her more speed. Do, 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 do. That's the train oh, warning. Okay, let's go up. It's always playing with those throttles. That's how you land this thing. Okay, I'm a bit slow here, so let's give her a bit more power. Try to keep her. Yeah, in the in the in the bracket. Okay, now let's turn. I should be able to. Even if I climb a bit, that's fine because I can 
then set the knife to center it. I'm gonna lose lift here, so I'm gonna do a more gentle turn. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm losing altitude, I'm too low, okay. I know. Well, at least it's warning me that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna calm it. I'm going to set a very slow, decent speed. Okay, flaps full down. Okay, that's the flaps basically can cause your nose to go up. And I had to manhandle a little bit there, but... It's, I guess it is kind of necessary. Tootie, tootie. Yes, yes. I know, I know. You don't like it, I don't like it either. Well, this is a practice landing, so... I need to keep her at about 100 feet per minute. I need to get a good to the side of the runway, so that is a bit far. Okay. Okay, my angle of attack is insanely high. It's a bad final, but I, I succeeded in keeping her like trimmed for speed and everything last flight. Do this without manhandling her. I think I'm gonna do a go around because this was bad. Okay, let's do it. Flaps up, gear up. Uh, the angle of attack, ideally, I think is about 8 degrees. Or between 8 and 9. So. I'm gonna do a go around here. This this will have to good approach. It's quite bad actually. I'm gonna try to do it from 600 feet, so I'm gonna apply to 6500, then do, do it again. And fly outwards a little bit more. I said 6,500, so... I'm gonna do a coup on that.
So I was uh, recommended by somebody to try to use a three degree pitch down attitude for approach. I'm using this, this is normally the carrier pattern, but I'm trying to use it for normal landing because once I move to the carriers, I need to be able to do that. So. Okay. Let's see. so I'm using the throttle to kind of set up the pitch at the attitude, but try to keep her at three degrees. To reduce the yes, I know. I'm low. Okay, so I'm a bit on the fast side. I'm gonna do a 10 degree back and turn so I don't lose uh, so much uh, altitude uh, because if you do the wings, you lose lift. That's the trick. So let's give her a bit more power. Try to find a nice sweet spot for the turn. I'm gonna do a very smooth landing. Normally, she can take about 1,200 feet per minute on on approach, but I don't want to do that because you risk damaging the landing gear. It's not a real plane. I know you can die a million times, but I'm, let's just say when it comes to aviation, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. And there's that runway. Okay, that's not the best final, but not the worst final either. Flaps full. Need to get her on speed again. Come on, girl. Yes, it's a girl. My Hornet is a girl. Losing too fast. Too fast. VSI is too big. Alpha is at five point. It should be about eight. Yes, I know. I know. Fast. It's not on speed. Okay, now it's on speed. It's almost on speed. Now it's on speed. Yeah. Altitude. Altitude. Stick for lateral. That's the only thing I use it for anyway. So, 410 feet. Okay. Power, power, power. Okay. This one's a bolter. No good. We're gonna go around again. That was a bolter. Basically, bolter. If it have been on a carrier, that I would have missed the approach. I was too low. I think I felt I was a bit too low there. And here up. One notch. Let's trim. Let's try to be on speed this time. Just some feet over the runway. Not much. Stabilizers 10 degrees as well. Okay. Yes, yes. If I check here, the runway altitude is 5534. Let's get a master caution. Oh, 
Okay, let's go to any gear now. Yeah, try to.
I'm sorry I got quiet a bit here, but the last, well, the landing, last landing was almost okay. Actually, I used the trim switch quite a bit on, on, on final to kind of correct her, but it was a bit fighting the plane, so that's not the best thing you can do in, in the Hornet, but... Oh, we still have plenty of fuel, so... Yeah, I think I'm gonna go to the hangars. I'm not gonna leave this to bake in the desert sun. I think let's take this first one here on the right.
Anyway, this was a personal analysis movie in the end. It won't really go to YouTube, it's just... To analyze my own performance. I take my phone to working and keep recording it. And if anybody wants to see it, I can probably upload it on demand. But I don't know. I'm ashamed of my performance. Anyway, uh, video log done.